Hi, my name is Cheryl. I work for the University of Missouri Horticulture and Agroforestry Research Center. And along with the Center for Agroforestry, every year we host the annual chestnut roast. Maybe you've been to one of the chestnut roasts and know how lovely the roasted chestnuts taste, but have you ever made anything with it? Today I'm going to share two recipes with you on how to use those chestnuts. One will be a chestnut puree that I will make a lovely latte with. The other is cookie. It's really easy to make both of them. It's not very complicated. It takes a little bit of time, but I know that you can do it. So to start with, you need about a pound of chestnuts to do both of these recipes. So you need to take the chestnuts and if you've been, you know what they look like. They've got a shell on them and you have to take that shell off. So they've also landed on the ground when they are ripe and they're harvested off of the ground, so you wanna wash them. I just took plain water out of the sink and rinsed them off several times. Then you need to score them. The chestnut will expand as it cooks, so you don't want it to burst open on you. It's very simple to just take a knife and cut straight through. That's an easy way. Then you add it to about for a half a, for the pound, it takes about two cups of water. You wanna make sure that you cover them completely. If you're not as confident with a knife and you'd like another option, they do have some chestnut scores. All you're trying to do is break that skin and this has a, a really nice uh, crisscross pattern in it that will score the nut. So you put it in there, you lay it flat and you pull down and it gives you a nice score on the bottom. You do wanna make sure that the score went through because you want it like that. So you want it to be able to let out the steam and give the chestnut room to expand. We will let these chestnuts boil for five minutes and then we're gonna take the hull off of them. So we'll meet you back here when these are ready to de-hull. Okay, I'm gonna continue to peel these and we're gonna fast forward to the next step for you. All of the chestnuts have been peeled and I'm going to add water until we cover the chestnuts. At this point, we're creating a simple sugar solution to flavor the chestnuts, but also to finish cooking them. To that water, I'm going to add some clear vanilla, some maple flavoring, and some homemade maple syrup. Instead of using processed sugar, I like to use our homemade maple syrup. So, I've added about a cup and a half of water. You wanna cover the chestnuts, and then we're going to pour in so I'm gonna pour in all of that, and that comes to about a half a cup. And that will be the perfect flavoring for this. I'm gonna pour all of that in. Then we're going to do, because natural homemade maple syrup doesn't usually taste like maple to me, I'm gonna add a nice, about a half of a teaspoon of the maple flavor. It will enhance the flavor that's in it naturally, but I think it'll give it just that little bit of kick that it needs. And because I think it rounds out the flavor profile, I'm also going to add a half of a teaspoon of vanilla. Then I'm going to start it cooking again for about 15 to 20 minutes. You'll bring it back and let it simmer. Okay, so once this is done reducing a bit, then you're going to take the, about half of it. We're gonna start with our puree. So we're gonna scoop out about half of the chestnuts. 
and you're wanting the puree to be fairly thin, kind of like an applesauce. So we'll put some of the liquid in as well. It's gonna have all that lovely sweetener in it and all of the different flavors. And it smells delicious right now. So it still has some chunks, so I'm gonna do it again. And maybe even a little higher. And it's still a little bit too thick for my preference. So I'm going to take the last little bit of liquid that's in here. Incorporate that nice sugar. And I think that did it. Yep, it looks like it's all nice and smooth. So I'm just going to smooth this out, get it to where there's nothing on the rim, and then I'm gonna seal it up and I'll put it in my refrigerator for the next seven days. I'll use out of it through the week. So now we're ready to assemble the latte. I like heavy whipping cream on the top of mine. You don't have to do this step, but I think it's delicious. So I like to buy heavy whipping cream and then whip it myself. I'm just eyeballing this, but I think we have about a fourth of a cup. I'm gonna set this aside. Now we're ready to whip this up. You can add vanilla or sugar or other things to it, but we, for my taste, we have plenty of sweetener in the uh, puree, in the chestnut puree, so I'm not gonna add any more. So, this is how I like it, where it hangs on to your whisk. I like a nice size shot. Before we put the milk in, it's nice to use your puree, your chestnut puree, and put it into the hot liquid coffee because it will help to um, incorporate the puree. So that's about a tablespoon. I like it. I want it to really flavor it. Plus that's where your sugar is, so if you like a sweet coffee. And this isn't super, super sweet. And then we're gonna pour in some milk. And then you can't forget that whipped topping. So you can serve it just like this and you've got a lovely cup of chestnut latte. With the remaining chestnuts, we're going to make a chestnut meal that we can make cookies with. They're a very simple cookie, and it doesn't take much to do it. So now we're going to mash up this cooked chestnuts. And I'm not looking to make a puree. This time I'm wanting to keep some texture to it. So I'm not gonna go nearly as fine. If there's some bits and pieces, that's good too. Okay, I've got this at the texture I want it. And so I'm gonna scoop it out of here and into a bowl. And another thing that we have at the University of Missouri Horticulture and Agroforestry Research Center is black walnuts. The flavor is very robust and I really like it. So we're gonna roll these, make them into a ball, and then roll them into the black walnuts. So I've got all of that out of the mortar and I'm going to take my black walnuts and I'm going to put them into the food processor and make a nice meal, a crumbly meal with them. guessing on this, 
Uh, this is probably about a half of a cup. I probably won't need that many, but I want to make sure. Mm, I can really smell the black walnut. If you've ever smelled a black walnut, it's very distinct and it's very, very aromatic. I love it. So this is perfect. I've washed my hands. This is a nice crumbly meal. So this is a little bit coarser than what an almond meal would be. I'm going to lightly put it onto my plate so that I can roll a ball of these in it. Like I said, I don't think I'll need it all, so I'm going to set it to the side. And I might need it, so I like to have a little extra. Okay, you make sure your hands are clean. And then you want to take this, get it all off the spoon. And as you can see, it, it's got a texture. It should be wet enough that it holds its shape. So I'm just going to roll the ball and then lightly just roll it through, maybe press just a little so it holds the black walnut on. It's somewhat like a snowball, but it's not, you know, it's not baked again because the chestnuts are fully cooked and all of the other ingredients are fully cooked, you are completely safe to eat this just like it is. So, oh, this was just about perfect. So that other part that I left in the food processor will complete the rest of these cookies for me. So there you have the cookies. So I'm gonna try this for you now. Mmm. <laughs> mm. Wonderful. You can taste the lovely maple flavor, but you can even taste the sweetness of the chestnut and the maple flavoring is just perfect. And with that black walnut, it's got a nice bold punch but it doesn't overpower everything. And then this is just a wonderful coffee drink. I dare you to find a better one. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure that you like, share, and subscribe to our channel, Mizzou Agroforestry. Forestry.